In this episode, Michael Gibson and Calvin McCarthy from the production company Video is the Future came up with a few sketch ideas. NBA team coming out, the music playing, chair song or whatever it is, and then the, the players coming out and going, what's going on? Looking around the room on a pitch meeting and just throwing things together. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah that's, that's easy. Great. That's easy. That's a great one. What if you had a Martin Scorsese who was doing a low-budget film? It's Deliverance meets Predator. Which one did we pick? You'll find out on this episode of... It's a Sketch Comedy Podcast Show. Welcome back to Sketch Comedy Podcast Show, the one-of-a-kind show where I, Stuart Rice, invite interesting people to have intriguing conversations and then improvise a comedy sketch based on what we talked about. If you like this episode, I highly suggest going to sketchcomedypodcastshow.com where you can go to YouTube and you can get other episodes and, and all sorts of really great stuff. Speaking of good, what makes a movie good? This was a conversation that I recently had and it really blew my mind. The argument was, if a movie is good and I can't keep my eyes open during it, is it good to me? I had to pause and completely agree. The movies that I enjoy most are the ones where I am engaged fully and feel connected because they are so entertaining. I hate to admit it, but there are a lot of good movies that do not appeal to me in any way. You know who would totally agree with that? Michael Gibson and Calvin McCarthy from the production company Video is the Future here in Portland, Oregon. Why? Because they're producing and creating a movie in Portland right now called Vampire Mutants from the Planet Neptune, which sounds more like a random word generator than the title of a movie. But after talking to these two, I have no doubt that it is going to be a really good movie. Well, at least for me. We talk about putting a movie together, the creative process, being in movies, watching movies. We talk a lot about movies. Calvin has been an actor and director in the Portland area since he was a wee little one. And Michael is a producer and focuses on sound, which is near and dear to my heart. And yes, we do talk about hanging dong in a movie. Michael and Calvin developed the production company Video is the Future, and their first production is going to be this aforementioned Vampire Mutants from the Planet Neptune, where you can join me at the premiere and help support this film. The link is in the show notes, and if you come, I'll even share my popcorn with you. And now, my conversation with Michael Gibson and Calvin McCarthy, the movie-making duo that sometimes hang dong. Michael, Calvin, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having yeah. us. So I've got a question for both of you. Okay. What makes you interesting? Oh, uh, so, I, I so big. Hear, Such a big question. I uh, want to hear mine. Okay, my immediate impression is what makes you interesting is everyone's interesting. And it's all our life experiences that make us interesting. What makes me interesting? I don't know. Uh, I'm a... But it's it's like uh, in the moment or uh, universally. I don't know. I'm a I'm a studio in Portland, <laughs> Oregon. What? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a deep thinker. That's what makes me interesting. All right. There you go. Uh, yeah. Um, I'll, I'll give more of a real answer to that. Um, okay. Here here's what makes me interesting. Just like off the bat, what I think people go that is really weird and interesting is my two biggest loves in life. Um, couldn't be more opposite. Number one, I'm like just a big movie nerd, like horror movie nerds, sci-fi movies, Godzilla movies, monster movies from the 50s. I'm like an encyclopedia of knowledge. But then my other biggest love is NBA basketball. <laughs> I know every player on every team. I know every starter on every team. Bleacher Report is my biggest thing. So that's usually one that I get people going, that is really interesting that both of those are like your two biggest loves. In life. Yeah, there's some like, uh, uh, gosh, what would I say? Like nerd stratification there. Like you can yeah. be an NBA nerd, but yeah. like those NBA nerds don't usually, the Venn diagram doesn't yeah. circle up, don't cross up. And then I throw like a loop, uh, another wrench in there where it's like, oh yeah, my, uh, my, my 
the two favorite artists, like musical artists, are like Billy Idol and the Psychedelic Furs. So none of those go together. Like none of my front, none of my basketball friends give a shit about the movies or the music that I like. That makes it really difficult when you're trying to figure out like uh, themes for bringing the teams onto the court, right? Exactly. You're like, you know, <laughs> yeah, like trying to think of like a psychedelic yeah. first song that would be good for bringing an NBA team onto the court, and it's like I can't. Yeah. All my love, yeah, you, know, you can't yeah. do that. It doesn't work. So yeah, I see. Yeah, what you're yeah I get, I get like uh, Godzilla Blu-rays and uh, Trailblazers jersey for Christmas. That's beautiful. I love it. I love it. Well, excellent. Well, I can think of something else that makes both of you pretty interesting. You've got a little bit of a project going on. Sure do. Why don't you tell us all about your project? Uh, glad you asked. Well, no. uh, we have a very exciting movie coming out. It's called Mutant Vampires from the Planet Neptune. And it's going to be a feature film. It's going to be a horror comedy movie in the style of kind of 80s slasher movies, uh, similar to Don Dohler films, uh, who kind of invented this genre of slasher meets sci-fi. So it's not like Michael Myers or Freddy Krueger. It's more like a space alien trying to kill the protagonist in the film. Uh, we're going to film it super low budget. We have an Indiegogo going on right now. And it's incredible that within like seven days, we've reached 90% of our goal. Yeah, that's awesome. I've actually donated. Oh, oh did you? you? Oh, my yeah. money where my mouth's at. Well, thank you so much for uh, yeah. donating. What, what, what perk did you get? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't remember. I just looked for the amount of money I was comfortable spending. Okay. Yeah. Went with that. So I think it was 25 bucks. Okay. This is good insight to see yeah. how people want, how, want to engage with it. Yeah, well, I was just, I was looking to support. Yeah, you know? yes. But I think I get, oh, no, I know exactly what it is. And that's exactly, I two tickets to the premiere. Everyone right. wants that yeah. one. We didn't think it was going to go very far. Yeah, yeah no, I mean, that's, uh, I, I want to be eventually out with people and enjoying something right. as a group, right? Yeah, yeah. that's what I figured. It, it's funny, too, because I've been a part of a lot of projects, like, as an actor that have had crowdfunding campaigns. But as filmmaker, I've never... Uh, I've, I've, I've never even really thought very deeply about doing a crowdfunding campaign for a movie. So this is really like my first my first time. I know that this is also mm -hmm. Michael's first time. And um, it's just like trying to figure out, you know, what, what did we think people were going to buy versus what are people actually buying? Um, and uh, it, it's really hard with how successful this one's been so far to even figure out like, what, what did we do wrong? Like, you know what? What I what are we getting from this that's not going to apply to other movies that don't have such a a catchy title or ridiculous concept? Or, right. Yeah. yeah, I think if you, I, I think that that's really important is to have that that record scratch moment for people, right? Mm -hmm. That just grabs their attention. And yeah, they have to be scrolling, and then they have to be like, "Wait, what was that?" Yeah, uh, I, I, I don't know what that even is. Attacking a girl in a bikini. <laughs> exactly. We got you to stop, right? What's that? That's what got that image that I just described got you to stop and donate, right? It, it totally did. That yeah. was exactly what it was. And in fact, I was only going to do ten dollars, but then I was hoping she was going to be at the premiere. And... No, not going to be at the premiere. No, well, yeah. Well, who's going to be at the premiere? Everyone's going to be at the premiere. Gonna be there, Monsters yeah. going to be at the premiere. The, yeah. the girls going to be at the premiere. We're going to be at the premiere. Yeah. yeah that's the most important thing. You guys are going to be at the premiere. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what, um, what is the, the inspiration behind this movie? It's got mutants. It's got vampires. It's got mutant vampires. Well, uh, like and I why said, Neptune? I, I, oh, yeah. That's another question we always get. So uh, at the top of the show, you ask, you know, what, what do we like? What makes us interesting? And like I said, you know, 50s, B horror movies – and sci-fi movies are like are just my jam. They've always been since I was a little kid. And uh, Michael mentioned uh, Don Doler, who's uh, a pretty big inspiration of mine because he's an independent filmmaker from the late seventies into the early eighties. Uh, he he's from Baltimore, Maryland, and he made movies in his backyard that ended up like on TV and ended up uh, gaining like this really big cult following. And I've just always been a really big fan of those movies. So first of all, I knew that 
when Michael opened up the studio space, we needed to do our, our first big project needed to be fun. It needed to be maybe not overly serious. Um, and that that kind of like 50s monster movie genre is just perfect for that. Like like we were also saying, it, it's one of those types of movies that if it's on like a Walmart shelf as a DVD for five bucks, you kind of stop and go, what, what the fuck yeah, is we, this? We dare you to not pick it up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're, you're so curious. Why Neptune? Uh, Neptune is the coolest planet in the solar system. It's the furthest from the sun. Uh, it's one of the gas giants. It has, you know, the big eye uh, storm that's constantly there. I mean, and, and also, you know what? Everyone's everyone's been to Uranus, you know, and uh, everyone gives love to all the other planets. So. Yeah. Uh, you, uh, you mentioned something there that I was trying to keep on the down low, but thank you for exposing me. In more ways than one. Yeah. So you're funding this through Indiegogo, and you're having some success, which is awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, I actually have had a guest on my show before who does uh, he does movies as well, Steve Wallet. I don't know if you know who he is, but he does. He is prolific. He's done like I would say 250 movies. Oh damn! Wow. And he goes on Indiegogo and he gets like $30,000 in like a week. It's crazy. Yeah. But uh, I think it's such a great, uh, great way to get funding because um, it's the people that are actually interested in what you're doing, yeah. going and doing that. Right. Um, what has been, uh, I mean, uh, I obviously asked a couple questions. What have been some questions you've been asked uh, from either people from Indiegogo or just people you know? What are the questions that you've, you've been asked that you're just, um, kind of surprised by how many people have asked to be in your movie? A, a, a couple, quite, a, a fair quite amount. Quite a few, quite a few. Yeah, I think uh, the one that was really interesting to me uh, is there's um, a pretty popular YouTuber named uh, Sean C. Phillips, and he's he he was like one of the first really big like YouTube people in like the movie community. He just has this huge collection and he just, you know, he would just go, oh, these are my top 10 favorite movies from the 80s, you know? And now he's like, you know, over 100,000 subscribers and, and his his day job is doing that. But since he has like this little pocket of, of uh, fame, uh, he's able to just get on all of these projects. And originally I, I reached out to him because I also have a, a YouTube horror movie review channel and I, I kind of know him. I've, I've talked to him a little bit before. I said, hey, would you mind like sharing this? Because it's kind of up your alley and your fans really like it. And he looked at it and said, oh, can I have a cameo in the movie? So that one was really surprising. Uh, what's also great is I think that just kind of speaks to the ethos of making this film is that we're super adaptable. It's like, oh, if you wanted to be in the movie. Yeah. And you want to promote it and you're just good for the project. Yeah, we'll put you in in any yeah, spot. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. You know, I can, you know, the, the, the great thing about a movie like this is, you know, it can it can uh, go through little changes. You can add things. You know, there's nothing wrong there's with There's nothing it. holy or sacred about it. Yeah, no, course. you know, you never... Right, yeah, you're not working from a source text that is revered. Right. You know, there's no... Oh, this was really funny. I, uh, I was explaining this, like, uh, oh, yeah, we got, uh, have you heard about mutant vampires to a friend I wanted to get involved? And he said, uh, no, I, I haven't heard about them. And he thought it was a serious thing. Like after the oh, hornets yeah. and after the coronavirus, there were actually mutant vampires going around. Oh, yeah. And they had to oh, take a wow. second. Be like, oh, wait, that, that can't possibly exist. Right. But that did, it did seem like the next chain in the progression of, of uh, society. Yeah. Um, I also did get an interesting question where, where a couple of people said, why mutant vampires? Aren't vampires from Neptune already weird enough? Uh, we, I mean, you want that subset of the subset. You're right, really, exactly. really targeting your audience here, right? Right. Um, to which I don't really have a good answer for that one. Yeah. Is, is it's he more like fun. A, is he like a mutant on Neptune? Like right. Or other, He's an outcast. Yeah. It's yeah. We have to say that for the sequel. We have to have a lot right. of... Right. Kind of These are the questions you answer in the movie. You don't want to just... Yeah, right. Go yeah. out and like blow the, the whole thing, blow the right. cover. A lot of mystery, a lot of twists and turns. This yeah. movie has a lot of intricacies to it. So you guys wrote the script, and yeah, yeah, yeah. we, you know, like I said, we Michael opened up the studio space. We knew that uh, I, I've had um, some some 
you know, t- success uh, with uh, getting distribution for my last feature films. They've all been horror films. Um, so when we started this space, we already kind of came in with this knowledge of like how how to do that, how to like go to a company, get your movie sold, get it on DVD, get it on Amazon, Tubi, maybe even something like Hulu. So we already knew how to do that. So we, we, we said, well, we got to, we have to do that for, for our first big project coming out of here. It's got to be a horror film because they're easy to sell. It should probably be something stupid and fun uh, that everyone can get excited about. And it went through a couple of different changes, you know, Michael and I throwing the ball around. We had a big whiteboard and uh, we just, we were like, this idea, mix this idea. And then it came down to like, what do we just have in the studio? Yeah. That looks like it's high production value. And then oddly enough, those items came together yeah, we, to make this movie. We have um, a very, very nice uh, latex vampire monster mask. It's like form fitting that, that the actor can emote. And um, Michael also had like this cosmonaut style suit. And it was like, oh, okay, those got to go together. Oh, yeah. And- Vampires in space. In space, Ooh. yeah. And, and it, it just like, it immediately yeah. was like, oh, no, right. and we said it, and it's like we knew. Yeah. Yeah. And the funny thing is, when we would tell that story, or when I was in the process of writing the script, that's how I would I would say it. It's like Michael and I were coming up with something. We realized we have a spacesuit and we have this vampire thing. And the first reaction that you get from people was please say that those two aren't going together. It's like, no, they're absolutely going together. It's and like it's chocolate and peanut butter is to my beautiful. ears. That's what I hear. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so, I, Calvin, you've been in movies, other movies? You've yeah. made other movies? Yes, yes. I've, um, I, I, I believe I've directed five other, other uh, feature films that have had some form of distribution. Uh, one of which is, uh, the DVD is, uh, you can pre-order the DVD on Amazon right now. Uh, That's another horror comedy called Jesus, I Was Evil. Uh, but I've been acting for about 11, 12 years, um, in in the uh, community around here. Um, I've I've had an agent the entire time. It's mostly just been like, uh, a lot, a lot of indie feature films that are shot around here. It's like either that or commercials. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds about right. Yeah. And then Michael, you've been, you're a producer, right? You produce. Yeah. I'm getting more into producing. I got into doing film stuff in Portland because I was looking to do a career change. I didn't want to work in an office anymore. And I started working in public access and I started to notice that everyone has a camera and they want to uh, shoot uh, their passion project, but they don't have good sound. So then I moved on to doing sound, production sound for independent films. And I realized that I really wanted to help uh, friends and other people in town uh, make their movies. And mm-hmm. like sound is a great thing for that because it really helps people, uh, you know, get getting better sound in addition to having good visuals makes their feature films or their indie projects just a little bit better. So right now I'm kind of shifting from doing just production sound to also doing producing, uh, which this uh, studio space that I'm opening up, which I want to give you a tour soon, uh, is uh, about 800 square feet of like production space. And we're going to open an office next door. So it's going to be a space where we can just shoot projects in here. It'll be like a little mini soundstage. And the hope is that like different movies, different feature films, different independent projects are going to come through the space and the team that's being established here will give a huge leg up to everyone's project and we'll, you know, be able to produce some amazing content out of here. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, Michael, when you uh, go to the movies, do you, when you listen to a movie, is there movies that you listen to that drive you nuts? Uh, once in a while, um, I, Usually, usually, uh, bigger budget features don't have those issues. They can usually fix it in post. Um, a lot of the local stuff, uh, I'm also guilty of this too. It's never perfect and you never have time to do all the work. Um, yeah, there's some stuff that is like really noticeable. It's kind of hard to know, like if every, if it kills the movie for everyone else, as long as it's just a little blip here and there, it's usually fine. There's uh, there's certain movies like feature films that get a lot of, get panned on the sound a lot. Um, Yeah. 
I mean, sound design is huge. Yeah. 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 It, what is it? In, Interstellar is one that gets panned pretty hard. Oh, and it's just like, it's interesting because it can make or break a movie for people because yeah. if you go into a, a movie I and you can't understand the dialogue or you can't, mm-hmm. so it really does have an effect on, on people. I, I just think it's like one of those like unsung, oh, the absolutely. unsung hero yeah. is the sound engineer mm-hmm. behind the scenes. Um, not to say that the actor's not important. Oh, yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, we, we're in front of the camera. Right, <laughs> right. Um, so, and so I know that you got this space in Portland, but tell me about Portland. Like, I, so you're not the only filmmakers in Portland. Portland's actually a pretty big filmmaker. Yeah. You know, Michael, yeah. you and I both have a friend that yeah. is in the final throes of getting a feature film uh, published. So, um, what, what, what do you, what is different about Portland than anywhere else as far as film? Oh, that's tough. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's tough from the perspective of, you know, I grew up in Los Angeles, but I didn't have a connection to the film community in LA. So I can only speak. So I can kind of only speak to the community here and there's a lot of support. There's a lot of pockets. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of talent out there. There's a lot of good people with good ideas. I like how there's different styles, different people who are doing different things. Mm -hmm. Like I know Calvin's a big horror movie nerd, but there are people out there who only do action movies or do romance films or do, uh, you know, like more personal artistic projects. Yeah. So there's a good diversity to the community. Um, I think that uh, collaboration is key. I wish that people would be connecting a lot more. Um, and I think that's one of the unique perspectives that I had doing sound is I got to be on a lot of different teams. Yeah. Uh, and that, yeah. that showed me different ways of, of doing things. And you kind of take the best things from each pocket, like, oh, that group, that crew uh, has this great ability to do this. Why don't we incorporate that over here? And this group does this. Why don't we incorporate that back on our team? Yeah. Yeah. What are some some terrible uh, habits that you're like, I'm not going to do those? Have you seen things that crews have done where you're like, oh, you gotta, uh, the big uh, the big ones are like scheduling. You got to show mm-hmm. up on time. Uh, you got to treat people with respect. Uh, you have to be realistic about what you can accomplish in a day. I think that's a big thing. Uh, you can't go into it uh, thinking that you're going to have, uh, you know, you can't cram, you can't brute force your way through a lot of filmmaking problems. You have to have like a time for it to look good. And you also got to come into projects being a little bit humble and not having like a, you know, a huge ego or, you know, expect, or you have to really work with the team. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I, I would definitely echo that. I think the biggest thing that I've noticed um, is that there's maybe there's maybe um, a fair amount of people who kind of approach uh, the film thinking, oh, like, I, I just, I got this because this is like my passion project or it's, it's, you know, this community has a big emphasis on kind of like this, like, very artistic aspect to it. And especially coming from being like an actor first and originally not, not really ever thinking I would be able to make my own movies. Uh, I, I obsess over it um, and I worry about it and I map everything out and I make, you know, shot lists months in advance um, because I know that when I get into editing, like I'm gonna, I, I, I want, uh, you know, the most amount of content possible. And I, I I agree with what Michael said. I think one thing that that I might differ a little bit on, and it might be why uh, maybe, maybe why Michael doesn't love um, all of my past movies, what but is- uh, it's the fact that for me, uh, like as an artist or as an editor, I would ten times out of ten rather have one hundred okay shots for a scene rather than like the one that everyone took forever to set up perfectly because I, you know, I saw this in a, in a Stanley Kubrick movie and I need it to be, I need the light glinting on the, on the fabric just right because that's what, you know, that's what Kubrick would do for me. It's like, it's clay. It's like, I can cut around. I can make this energetic. I would rather have like diversity in shots to build a scene to like like i i kind of just call it like the covering your own ass style where it's like just get a bunch of stuff here 
Um, so it's like quantity over quality because you know you can cut it together properly in the editing. A little room. bit. I think yeah. that there is a little there. There is something to say about, especially if you find yourself in a time crunch. Um, having an ability to like muscle your way through a scene and go, I'll just, I'll, I'll make sure that I cover my ass somewhere else with, with a shot. So it may be if the, if the light reflecting off the fabric isn't as beautiful as everyone else wants, I could cut away from that. No, I right. agree with that. You can't be precious about yeah. those things. It's about no. what you need to tell the story. I also make horror movies, which, you know, if you're making, you know, if you're making your passion project about, you know, uh, uh, kittens learning how to read or whatever. Okay, maybe you need that. Maybe you need your beautiful, glorious shots. But uh, right, that movie next. Yeah, I know. But for for mutant vampires, meh, you know, make it colorful, make it make it fun and action packed. Put a lot of blood in it. We're good. People are gonna yeah, look. let's face it. Like some of those, like uh, like those those trailing shots or the one shot. You know, on a on a. Uh, on a what do they call them a tram or whatever they're yeah, like, yeah. those things are beautiful also ridiculously expensive right, right. yeah and i get asked all the time like why isn't this more of like why don't you make cartoons for your sketches and i'm like you don't have any idea yeah what the budget <laughs> yeah what i've looked into it it's like the budget goes up dramatically when you start adding those things and sometimes it's just good to get the story out there right? yeah yeah and, and tell it in the best possible way you can um, that's awesome. What are some of the movies that you guys, uh, obviously a lot of horror movies, uh, for you, Calvin, but what are some movies that like, those are the movies you aspire to? Is it Kubrick? Uh, I really like, uh, Stanley Kubrick and David Lynch. I also really love Charlie Kaufman. I love Schenectady, New York, Adaptation, Eternal Sunshine, Being John Malkovich. Uh, but I also like a lot of, uh, trashy B, B movies. I love Samurai Cop. I love Hard Ticket to Hawaii. Uh, I love Birdemic. I love The Room. I love Troll 2. Um, yeah, so if we can aspire to anywhere in between that yeah. spectrum, that'd be great. Uh, you know, I, I, and I do love good movies. You know, I, my, I do have a, an entire movie room in my house that's full of DVDs and Blu-rays. And yes, most of them are, are, are horror movies or what people would call B-movies. Uh, but I mean, like, there, you know, one of my favorite movies is uh, Francis Ford Coppola's Rumblefish. I think that that's like one of the best, most underrated movies ever made, or most underrated like art films ever made. You know, I would love to be able to make something like that. There's maybe we did a short recently in the studio space that I don't know. I, I kind of hope maybe has some of that like Rumblefish feel to it, um, you know. But yeah, I mean, I would be lying if I said that uh, you know I would I would watch uh, uh, a '70s Godzilla movie over a, uh, a David Lynch film any day. Yeah, give me the give give me Godzilla versus the Smog Monster any day. Right. Yeah. Now you know the fight the action sequences might be better, right? Yeah. yeah. For sure they are. Yeah. Um, Calvin, I asked this of all uh, actors or actresses that have been on, on my uh, show, uh, I, I, nudity in film. Have you ever done any? Oh, yeah. Oh, has? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Actually, for mutant vampires, I have a very small part. I, I'm, no, I'm, no, you should not say that when you're talking about nudity. I, I, yeah. Uh, um, I, I'm, I'm starting to <laughs> put it in my, uh, like, it's it's got to be in my contract now. It's like, I got to at least have a butt shot. Yeah. I, I would be funny. the same way. I do that for this show too. Yeah. Like I make myself write my own contract so that I have to have some full frontal nudity. In. Yeah, butts are funny. Yeah, uh, of course. I, I, you know, uh, one of the first feature films that I was in uh, when I was really young. There's no nudity, but it's it's definitely uh, suggested. I, I was in a, a film called Adults in the Room, uh, and so so right off the bat, I, as an actor. Your I, was, was stolen. I was already doing yeah. like things that were maybe a little bit uh, risque. Um, but yeah, I mean, I did I did uh, an art horror film, I, I guess, uh, called uh, The Dead Man Island. And, you know, there's any full a frontal in, in that. that. Yeah, there's a lot of nudity in that movie. I just, you know, I don't I don't really have a problem with it. I also don't have anything to like 
prove. Also, you're not gonna, nobody's gonna embarrass me. You have very you know? little shame. I have very yeah. little shame. I, I really don't. I, I feel I, like shame is, is one of those things that just it hinders art. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think that it's really unfair, um, like on a serious note, when like male actors or male filmmakers or just like guys in general, um, you know, what What did we all do as like young teens? It's like, of course you want to watch the horror movie that's got nudity on the back of the box. You know, that was like every 12 year old boy. So it's just like really unfair then that you have a lot of male actors who are very like, you meet a lot of them who don't want to take their shirt off. It's like, come on, you you know, you right. can't have that double standard. Like, you really do have to be willing to do anything you ever ask an actress to do. It it's really fair. is just, it's it's fair, like, on a serious note. Yeah. yeah. Calvin, I lied. I've never actually asked that question of anybody. But oh, thank no, you. that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, yeah, I... I I, I'm in the same boat. Uh, Michael, any uh, full frontal sound design in a movie? Uh, trying to think what full frontal sound design would be. You, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, you hear a lot of like internal stuff. You hear a lot of throat gurgling. You hear a lot of stomach issues, depending on what people had for lunch. Uh, yeah, you get real deep inside and personal. Yeah, okay. All right. That was the dirtiest thing ever said on this podcast. Thank wow. you. Oh, good. Okay. Well, we, yeah, <laughs> I've got that. Yeah. yeah. We, 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 um, all right. Uh, so we're at that point where we're going to, uh, we now have to record a sketch. After you're done Googling all of the different places where you can see Calvin's ding dong, honestly, if you need the list, just send an email to sketch comedy podcast show at gmail.com. I'll send it to you. No worries. Then you might actually want to find out some other interesting things that both Michael and Calvin are working on. Mutant vampires from the planet Neptune. Actually, Michael, Calvin, where's the best place to find that? Yes, uh, mutant vampires from the planet Neptune. We we are getting into uh, production in March. Um, our big days are going to be in April, and we have an Indiegogo campaign that is running up into uh, mid April. Uh, we're already doing really well with it, and and we just we need your guys' support. Even if you can't uh, contribute uh, money, <laughs> uh, just shares and likes. Uh, is is huge for it. Just getting eyeballs on the project is just as important, honestly. Uh, we can't wait to be filming it and giving people updates. And we really hope that you can donate or share. And we can't wait for you to watch the film. Some extra proof that, that we're not just, uh, you know, goofy filmmakers. And this is just going to end up on YouTube somewhere. Uh, uh, not my last film, but, but two films ago, uh, Jesus, I Was Evil. You can already pre-order it on Amazon. You can pre-order the DVD right now. I think it's like a whole whopping $12. I'd almost be willing to host a watch party if you guys would be interested in that. I have already pre-ordered the movie. And now, our sketch. Oscar-worthy movie pitch with Michael Gibson and Calvin McCarthy. In three, two... Mr. Spielberg, your next appointment is here. Yeah, okay, send these guys in. We've got the next blockbuster movie for you. You're saying you've got the next blockbuster movie for me. Do you know who I am? We've watched every movie that you've ever produced. Mr. Spielberg, you're a fantastic artist, but let me tell you something. You are missing out on uh, male full frontal nudity. Nobody wants to see tits and ass anymore. Give right. the people what they want. It's all about dongs these days, Mr. Spielberg. Well, it's Spielberg. I just want to make sure I'm uh, clarifying. I don't want to get confused with that hack. People want dong? Dongs, plural. Movies need to hang dongs these days, Mr. Spielberg. All right, I'm listening. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to make a space opera centered around Romeo and Juliet in space. Sort of like zombies and Pride and Prejudice bullshit, that type of thing? And everyone's going to want to go see this movie, but what they realize is it's not going to be full of nude women. It's going to be full of nude men. It'll be the talk of the town. Now, you realize that I am a Oscar-nominated director of film. Absolutely. You've made fantastic films. My last movie made $150 billion. 
this movie's going to be so big, they're going to have to open a new category at the Oscars just for you. Nominated three times for this one movie. You are going to be the first X-rated, dong-hanging film to win an Oscar, Mr. Spielberg. All right. I, I like where you're going. What, what's, uh, what do you got as far as plot? Two space stations that are on opposing planets that don't like each other. You know, we're going to break a lot of new ground. They're also being puppets. Puppets are going to be key to this. The whole are these puppets, do they also have dongs that are hanging? Oh, that's the beauty of puppets. They yes. can have as many dongs as you want. Tell me some of the uh, action scenes, because that's what I'm known for in my movies, are the uh, dramatic action scenes. Like, So tell me some of these dramatic action scenes I can expect to, to be filming in this movie. There's going to be tons of laser shootouts. There's going to be tons of, of gore and decapitations. But you know what? Nobody's going to care about it. They're going to go to see puppet dongs. Have you ever seen puppet dongs in a feature film before? You're intriguing me quite a bit. What kind of a talent are you thinking for this film? I will be voicing one of the puppets, probably the puppet uh, that hangs the most dong. Um, you also have the gravitas. I, I have the gravitas for it. I have. I have. I can hear it in your voice. You've I, got I a good a, hanging dong voice. I have the voice of someone who hangs dong. Uh, but I also think Woody Harrelson. Woody Harrelson loves doing movies his like his, this. his friend Bill his, Bill his, Murray. His vet will come along. Have you ever heard? You ever heard of Bill Murray? You know, Bill- I uh, ran into Bill Murray at a uh, cocktail party. Uh, he was interested in a movie where, quite honestly, he was asking why he doesn't get a lot of offer to hang and dong. Uh, he's never been in a movie with a puppet. But, but we know that. He, and he's never done nudity. And that's the one thing that if Bill Murray goes to his grave and never hangs dong in a film. On his gravestone, it'll say never, never hung. hung do- did everything except for hanging dong. I'm loving this project so much. I don't know what the story is. I don't really understand why we would be making it, but I'm in. All right. What do you need from me? Couple, couple hundred million to get the puppets made. We, we will also need two space stations as we will be filming on location. Okay. So it looks like uh, I got to get in touch with Elon Musk to get some space stations up in space. And if Elon Musk can hang Dong too, we're just going to double the revenue that we would have gotten already. He'll be interested, but he uh, he's definitely going to be asking for one thing in particular. What's that? How good is the CGI budget and can they make things bigger? Thank you again for joining us on Sketch Comedy Podcast Show. We hope you enjoyed listening as much as we had fun making it. Sketch Comedy Podcast Show is protected under a Creative Commons Attribution No Derivatives 4.0 International License. If you would like to use any portion of this show, please just contact the show at sketchcomedypodcastshow at gmail.com and request permission. I would also love to hear from you. If you've got an idea for a sketch, shoot it my way. Maybe we'll record it together. 